church? Are you in the house? I said, are you there? Let the church see. The Lord bless and enrich your life in Jesus' name. And I pray that our development session today will be a real time of development in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for our leaders. Thank you, Lord, for our faithfulness. Thank you for our devotion. Thank you for the consecration of your people. We're asking, Lord, that tonight you bless your people once again in Jesus' name. Reveal yourself more to us so that we can reveal more of you unto members in the various churches in Jesus' name. Open our eyes of understanding that we'll see and behold wondrous things out of your word. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. We're reading from Proverbs chapter 29. Proverbs chapter 29. And I'm reading from verse 18. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law happy is he that first part again where there's no vision the people perish we need vision from god as we serve god as we are working for god as we are cooperating with the lord in the work of the kingdom so that the work the ministry in our hands will bear fruit when there is no fruit, we are not happy. When there is no fruit, there is no joy of service. When there is no fruit, the Lord himself is not very happy. And yet, there cannot be fruit in multiplied folds if there is no vision. We are coming to Lamentation chapter 2. Lamentation chapter 2. I read from verse 9. Her gates are sunk into the ground. He has destroyed and broken her bars. A king and her princes are among the Gentiles. The law is no more. Her prophets also find no vision from the Lord. That was a tragedy. In the lives of the children of Israel, a tragedy in the whole nation when the prophets of the Lord, when the representatives of the Lord had no vision. Our prophets also find no vision from the Lord. Look at verse 14. Thy prophets have seen vain and foolish things for thee, and they have not discovered thine iniquity. To turn away thy captivity, but I've seen for thee false bodies and causes of banishment. And so you see, the condition of the nation would be determined by the vision coming from the Lord through to the prophets. And when the prophets had no vision, it was a terrible scene in the nation of Israel. But thank God, in Habakkuk chapter 2, Habakkuk chapter 2, reading here from verse 2, verse 3, and verse 4, telling us when the vision comes, what we need to do about the vision, so that the vision will bear fruit in our lives, bear fruit in our ministry. Habakkuk chapter 2, reading from verse 2. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision. When he gives the vision, write it. When he gives the vision, print it. When he gives the vision, record it. When he gives the vision, put it on paper so that it becomes indelible. And you cannot erase it. Write the vision. Make it plain upon the tables. Make it clear. Make it simple. 
Make it understandable that he may run that readeth it. We need to take action when God gives a vision so that the one who reads will have excitement within, energy within, strength within, and he will run with that vision. Look at verse 3. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. In the time of Habakkuk, it was still future. But those future things have already begun to happen. You know, you understand that the prophets of the Old Testament, they saw the coming of Christ, the coming of the Lord. And for them, it was still an appointed time. When Isaiah saw the, saw the vision, it was to be for the appointed time of Christ's coming. And when Daniel saw the vision, it was for the appointed time of Christ's coming. And Habakkuk, when he saw the vision, it was for the appointed time. But now Christ has come. In due time, Christ came and died for our sins. It says in verse 3, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. That is, it will speak and it will not fail. The vision of the Lord and the vision for the church will be fulfilled in your day, in your time, in Jesus' name. Do it, tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. And as we talk about the vision today, what the, the vision the Lord is given, it will not tarry, it will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Behold, in verse 4, a soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. That is, uh, the enemies of the gospel and the enemies of the vision and the enemies of God, it says, they are so lifted up in them. That's not upright, but the just shall live by his faith. You can tell then he's talking about the time coming. When that vision of Christ's sacrifice, when that vision of Christ's atonement, when that vision of Christ's salvation being given to us will be fulfilled. And it says that by faith the just shall live. Let me show you an example of what you do when you have the vision. Tonight we're talking about the supernatural impartation of vision for fruitfulness vision for fruitfulness the supernatural impartation when it comes such a vision so that you'll bear fruit so that the church will bear fruit so that the ministry will bear fruit there is a supernatural impartation and it gives us that in a vision and you have the vision of that fruitfulness look at illustration here in genesis chapter 15 i'm reading from verse 1 Genesis chapter 15, verse 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision. Remember again, without vision, the people perish. It says, it came to Abraham in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abraham, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abraham said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. And Abraham said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed. And lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, this shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. Now look at verse 5. And he brought him forth abroad and said, look now toward heaven. There's a vision now. There's revelation now. There's a promise of God for him, and there's the assurance that he was not going to be barren, and you are not going to be barren. He was not going to be fruitless, and you are not going to be fruitless. That 
this uh, mission of the Lord mean, meant for him that he would he be fruitful. Look now toward heaven and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. So shall thy seed be. Verse 6, And he believed in the Lord. He believed the vision. It was like unthinkable. It was like incredible. It was like unbelievable. Because he had no child yet. It's like somebody now is a worker. Somebody now is a Christian. Somebody now is a servant of God. And there is no church building. And there is no land. And there is no convert. And the church is uh, very small. Only what he met there. And the Lord brought him out and said, look up. And look at the stars. And look at how many they are. So shall thy converts be. And he believed in the Lord. You believe the Lord tonight. And he counted it to him for righteousness. Counted it to him for righteousness. Tonight, the supernatural impartation of vision for fruitfulness. We're coming to Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 20. Mark chapter 4, verse 20. And these are they with are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit. Tell me, number one. I say, tell me, what do you find there? Looks like you're not reading the Bible with me. Mark chapter 4, verse 20. Open your Bible, open your Bible. Mark chapter 4, verse 20. I'm going to read that again. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word, and receive it, and bring forth fruit. Now tell me one. Some 30, tell me the next. Some 60, and tell me the next. Some and 100. As you look at what Jesus Christ was saying, you need to see the vision. The vision of fruitfulness and the understanding of Christ in fruitfulness. We sow the seed. There's a convert. And that single convert goes out. He also sows the seed in other people. And that single seed, as it multiplies and multiplies, you have some bearing fruit, 30 fold. And you have others bearing fruit, 60 fold. And you have others bearing fruit, a hundred fold. A vision from God is very important. A single vision is worth more than 1,000 ideas, 1,000 pursuits of the blind. Without a vision from God, people perish. Without a vision from God, souls are lost. Without a vision from God, lives are wasted. Without a vision from God, talents and skills are misused. Without a vision from God, opportunities pass by without bearing any fruit. And without a vision from the Lord, gifts become worthless. You know, whatever strength we have, whatever strategy we have, whatever church we belong to, and whatever work is committed into our hands, if we don't have vision, with that work, no vision, with that ministry, there'll be no fruit. We'll just be laboring like the blind, and then there's no result, and there is no fruit. There's no multiplication of the fruit concerning the work we're doing. And think about this as we go through the Bible. Abraham had a vision from God, and multitudes were blessed. As that vision came to Abraham, and God said, Look at the stars, and if you can count them, so shall thy seed be. That vision generated in him multitudes that were blessed. Moses had vision of the burning bush, and a whole nation was delivered. He saw the bush burning. He said, I'll turn aside. I'll see what is happening. As a result of that vision given to Moses, Many, many people were delivered, and a whole nation came out of their captivity. Joshua saw the vision of the heavenly captain, 
and a weak nation became a warring, conquering nation. Think about Daniel. Daniel saw the vision, and when he saw the vision of the ancient of days, he passed through and survived in the lion's den and preserved a nation for a glorious future. You come to the New Testament and Peter saw the vision. And the vision Peter saw made the door of faith to be opened unto the gentle world. He saw the vision that you'll go to the house of Cornelius. And he was doubting. He didn't understand. While he was thinking on the mission, the Lord said, I've sent them, go with them, that open the door of faith unto the Gentiles. Paul the apostle, Paul had a vision. And the whole empire, the Roman empire, was brought out of darkness into the gospel light. John the beloved saw the vision and God gave him that vision, and now the book of Revelation is given and preserved for the church. So, vision from God is very important. That's why tonight, once again, we're talking on the supernatural impartation of vision for fruitfulness. Let me read that uh, verse 20 again of Mark chapter 4, because the three points are connected with that Mark chapter 4 verse 20 and these are they which are sown on good ground such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit some thirty fold some sixty and some a hundred three things we're looking at in the message tonight number one internalizing the vision and the promise for thirtyfold fruitfulness, internalizing that is, you bring it internal, you make it personal, you transfer it from the screen, you transfer it from the canvas, you transfer it from the situation, transfer it to your heart, internalizing the vision and the promise of thirtyfold fruitfulness. Point number two, investing. The valuables in the process of 60 fold fruitfulness. We're going from 30 fold and we're going to 60 fold, and that will take investment, investment, valuables, your time, very valuable, your talent, valuable, your gold and your silver, valuable, your skill, valuable, everything you've got, valuable. You invest the valuables in the process of. 60 fold fruitfulness point number three implementing with virtue and perseverance as we're going to implement the vision so that we're going to be a fruit as we want to see the result and we're expecting we're going to see the result implementing with virtue and perseverance the hundred fold fruitfulness hundred fold fruitfulness we need virtue all the virtues of the grace of God made available to us. And we need perseverance, decision, determination, and they will keep on pursuing until there is a hundredfold fruitfulness. Implementing with virtue and perseverance the hundredfold fruitfulness. Number one. What's number one there? internalizing the vision and the promise of 30-fold fruitfulness. When God gives a vision, you need to do something first of all about that. I'm coming to Daniel chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7. And we're reading from verse 1. Daniel chapter 7. Reading from verse 1. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Daniel had the vision. And as Daniel had the vision, look at the last verse. We're looking at verse 28. See what happened when he saw the vision. Hitherto is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my cogitations, that means my thoughts, my meditations, as I thought about it in my heart, as I turned it over in my heart, 
as I internalized the vision. It says, my cogitation much troubled me, and my countenance changed in me, but I kept the matter in my heart. I did not let it go. I held on to it. I felt this is very important. He internalized it. You see, if God gives you a vision, a vision of fruitfulness, it will be so great, it will be so far ahead, it will be so wide, it will be so broad, you don't think that thing is achievable. But keep it in your heart and keep on turning it over and turning it over in your heart, fulfillment will come. I said fulfillment will come. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles chapter 26, and I'm reading from verse 16. Acts chapter 26, we're reading from verse 16. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister. A minister there, and a witness, another witness there, both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things which in the which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles, Unto whom now I send thee to open their eyes. This is a ministry, you'll open their eyes. And then he goes on to say, and to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God. And then he goes on to say that they may receive forgiveness of sins. That's a vision, that's the understanding. That's a calling, that's a ministry that he was going to receive, that the people, he prayed to them repentance, and then grace will come to them, conviction will come to them. They turn away from their sins, and then their forgiveness of sins, and inheritance among them, which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Look at verse 19, whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. He kept the vision in the heart. He held on to that vision all through his ministry, all through his life, ups and downs, difficulties and challenges and trials and tribulation and whatever was happening, he kept that vision. Very important, internalizing the vision and the promise of thirtyfold fulfillment, well, fruitfulness. We're coming to Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 14. Mark chapter 4, verse 14. The sower soweth the word. The sower soweth the word. And as a result of sowing the word, here is the result. We're looking at verse 20. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word, and receive it, and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold. Now, what do we do of the vision? The seven things we need to do with the vision, you get the vision. You receive the vision. Because there's going to be a thirtyfold fruitfulness. And when it says thirtyfold, it's not talking about thirty per se. For example, when you say twofold, that means double. When you say fourfold, that means multiplied by four. And when you talk about thirtyfold fruitfulness, that means fruits multiplied. 30 times over. That is, over time. It's part of the law of sowing and reaping. It's part of the law of planting and harvesting. It is part of the law of laboring and bearing fruit. See the vision Jesus Christ painted in the heart of the disciples when he said there will be 30 fold fruitfulness there will be 60 fold fruitfulness there will be a hundred fold fruitfulness it's like it's like a single christian going out like that woman by the well and then she saw the revelation of christ this is the messiah this is the christ this is my savior. And then she went to town. I went to tell people, come see a man that told me everything I did. It's not this, the Christ. And more than 30 people came out. More than 100 people came out. More than 200 people came out. The whole city came out and they said, now we know. Not just because of your word, but because we have heard him ourselves. And we know that this is the Christ. 
30 fold fruitfulness. That's possible. It's like that man that was delivered. And when he was delivered, then he wanted to follow Jesus. And Jesus said, No, go back home to thy friends and go and tell them all the things that Christ has done for you, how he has had compassion on you. And he went to Decapolis and went everywhere. And by the time Jesus came back, multitudes had accepted that testimony. That's like a 30 fold. In fact, his son was more than 30 fold, um, 30 fold fruitfulness. It's like a congregation, for example, of 100. That single congregation, the people that they catch the vision and they catch the fire and they go out to evangelize. And then that uh, congregation of 100 becomes 3,000. That is a 30 fold uh, kind of fruitfulness. And the question is, where is your vision? We need to have the vision of what Christ has said and what Christ has promised. We internalize it. Look at what, uh, how we get this vision rolling. How we get the 30 fold uh, fulfillment and fruitfulness. Number one, internalize. Internalize. That's what we need to do. Bring it in. You see the vision, you hear the vision and you understand the vision, then you make sure that it gets into your heart. Internalize it. Acts of the Apostles chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 19. Acts chapter 10 verse 19. While Peter thought on the vision. You see that? He saw the vision. He thought on the vision. He saw the vision. He meditated on the vision. He saw the vision. He personalized the vision. He saw the vision and then he brought it inside. And it says in verse 19, while Peter thought on the vision, the spirit said unto him, behold, three men seek thee. Arise therefore and get thee down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Now you could act on that vision because, number one, he internalized the vision. Number two, investigate the vision. Investigate the vision. Don't allow it to just pass like that. Investigate. What does that mean? Investigate. What can I do? Investigate. How does this apply to me? Investigate. How will this turn my life, my ministry around? You get to a new community. And the Lord has been pressing it on your heart. That's the vision. That these souls are going to be saved. The Lord has been pressing it upon your heart. That you go into all the world. And that's, this is part of that world. And then preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. And then you are thinking about that. You must investigate. How are the people here? What are the churches here? And what are the needs of the people here? Have they had the gospel before? Have they not had the gospel before? What's their attitude? What's their response? What's their reaction to what they have heard? Investigate the vision. We're coming to Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 2. Exodus chapter 3 verse 2 And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush and he looked and behold the bush burnt with fire and the bush was not consumed That was a vision that he saw The bush was burning and it wasn't consumed Look at this verse 3 And Moses said I will now turn aside and see investigate investigate find out what's happening here was the bush not consumed what kind of fire is this what message is the lord trying to tell me and trying to show me as a result of this bush burning and not consumed i will now turn aside and see this great sight why the bush is not burnt as a result of that the Lord began to explain to him. And the Lord, the calling of the Lord came unto him. Look at verse 4. In verse 4 it says, And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, 
God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nice either. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And God said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters for I know their sorrows I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Now therefore behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppress them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee, because they turned aside, because he investigated the vision, because he said, I want to see what's happening here. God began to talk to him, and his ministry came. You see, when God shows you the vision, number one, internalize the vision. Number two, investigate the vision. Look at verse 10, come now therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Number three, interpret the vision. Interpret the vision. You see, without interpretation, you don't know whether that applies to you or not. Without interpretation, you, you don't know what you have to do about that vision. The vision is revealed. God gives the vision, and it is a vision of 30 fold fruitfulness. How will that be? How will one become 10, 30? How will 10 become um, 300? How will 100 become 3,000? You receive the vision, internalize. And then you investigate the vision. Look at that community and look at where it will take place. Number three now, interpret. Interpret the vision. Break it down. How will that happen? Do I go to that area and that area and that area? Do I have some believers that will join hands with me? And then we pursue that vision, interpret. We're looking at Job chapter 33. Job chapter 33. And I'm reading from verses 14 and 15. Job chapter 33. Reading from verse 14. In verse 14, for God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, in slumberings upon the bed. And it says in that verse 14, yet. There is no understanding. But look at verse 23. Verse 23. If there be a messenger with him, an interpreter, one among a thousand, to show man his uprightness. Then you can continue reading later. You see, interpretation is necessary. After he has revealed the vision, after he has revealed the goal, after he has shown the ideal, after he has shown this is the way to go, and this is what to do, then you internalize, then you investigate, then you interpret. Look at Isaiah chapter 29. If there's no interpretation, we don't benefit much from the vision. Isaiah chapter 29. I'm reading from verse 11. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 11. And the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed. It's a vision. It's supposed to be a revelation. But it's like a book that is sealed. Which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee, 
And he said, I cannot because it is sealed. I need an interpreter. I need somebody who understands. I need the same spirit that gave the vision to interpret it to me. I cannot because it is sealed. Look at verse 12. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he says, I am not learned. The point there is that we need an interpreter. We need interpretation. Look at verse 17. Is it not yet a little while? And Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field. And you hear the amen? Yeah. And the fruitful field shall be esteemed as a forest. Number one, internalize the vision. Number two, investigate the vision. Number three, interpret the vision. Number four, inform others about the vision. Influence others with the vision. Instruct others about the vision. Inspire others to run with the vision. Inform them. Instruct them influence them inspire them carry the vision take it to your congregation the congre the congregation does dormant there the congregation almost blind the congregation no excitement the congregation they don't know what to do they just come to church everything give me give me give me they want this they want this they want that inspire them influence them instruct them and let them know about the vision it tells us in Habakkuk chapter 2 Habakkuk chapter 2 reading from verse 1 Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1 I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I'm reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision. And it says, Make it plain upon the tables that he may run that readeth it. Make it known. Share it with other people. Instruct other people. Influence other people. Inspire other people with a vision of fruitfulness. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie, though it tarry wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. The latter part of verse 4, the just shall live by his faith. Look at verse 14, in verse 14, this vision is going to be realized. This vision is going to happen. You receive the vision. You internalize the vision. And you interpret the vision. And you investigate the vision. And now you pass it on. And as you pass it on, every member of the church, of the local church, every member of the church, of all the churches in the city, Every member of the church, the church in the nation, as we receive the vision. And everybody is ready to run with the vision. Look at the result in verse 14. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. A better amen than that. Number five, intercede. Intercede. Pray. As a result of that vision, when you get the vision, this thing is beyond human strength. It's beyond what you can do by yourself. It's beyond what you can accomplish by yourself. Intercede. Make sure that you send your prayers unto the Lord as a result of the vision. Prayer. The whole church praying. 
the member she is praying, the leader she is praying, the family is praying in our devotional, in our devotional sessions in our homes. As individuals, as family members, we take this vision to the Lord, the vision of fruitfulness intercede on the basis of the vision acts of the apostles chapter 16 acts chapter 16 i'm reading from verse 9 acts chapter 16 verse 9 and a vision appeared to paul in the night a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over. Prayed him, saying, Pleaded with him. And there's somebody over there who had been praying. If the light will come to us, if the gospel will come to us, if preachers of salvation will come to us, they were fed up with idolatry. They were fed up with their tradition. And some people were praying, God, reveal yourself and reveal the light more to us. And this is what Paul the Apostle saw when he saw that one man of Macedonia prayed and said, come over into Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, Immediately, we endeavor to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel unto them. Therefore, loosing from Troas, we came with a straight course to Samothracia, and the next day to Neapolis. And then in verse 12, and from thence it goes on and on like that. And now we come to chapter uh, verse 13. And on the Sabbath day, we went out of the city by a river where prayer was wont to be made. Prayer brought him. And then he got to a prayer meeting. Look at that again. You surround the vision with prayer so that there'll be a fulfillment of the realization of that vision. And then he goes on to say, and we sat down and speak unto the women which resorted thither. Number one, internalize the vision. Number two, investigate the vision. Number three, interpret the vision. Number four, inform, instruct, influence, inspire others with the vision. Instill the vision in the hearts of many more people. Number five, intercede on the basis of the vision. Number six, initiate action. Initiate action. Don't just say, well, God, that's a great vision. That's a wonderful vision. I appreciate that vision. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You revealed all that to me. Start doing something. Initiate action. Initiate strategy. Initiate something to do on the basis of that vision. Come back to that same chapter 16. Acts of the Apostle, chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 10. Initiate action on the basis of the vision. It says, and after he had seen the vision, immediately initiate action immediately we endeavor to go into macedonia assuredly gathering that the lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them look at verse 13 and on the sabbath we went out of the city by a riverside where prayer was once to be made once to be made and we sat down and spake unto the women which resorted thither. And a certain woman named Lydia, sailor of purple of the city of Tatira, which worshipped God, heard us. She was there in that prayer meeting. She had us whose heart the Lord opened, open to the truth of the gospel, open to the word of salvation, and she attended unto the things which were spoken by Paul, obedience of faith, responding to the, to the word of faith. And it goes on to say, and when she was baptized, she believed, and she was baptized. And her household, she besought us, saying, if ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord come into my house and abide there and she constrained us that house became 
the starting point now of reaching out with the gospel to many, many other people. Initiate action. All that we're hearing, you hear on Saturday, you hear on Tuesday, internalize everything. Think about everything and plan concerning everything and then initiate action and say, what do I do as, as a result of this? Where do I go as a result of this? Who can I touch as a result of this? And where do I preach as a result of this? How can I expand? How can I go beyond the little house fellowship? How can I go beyond the little zone? How can I go beyond the district? How can I go beyond my region? How can I go beyond what we have? already initiate action. Number seven, inculcate. Inculcate that vision in the hearts, in the minds of other people. You're not going to be the one alone that has all these uh, privileges. I hear that on Tuesday. I've heard that on Saturday. Inculcate that in other people so that as you are running, other people too are ready to run. Look at Acts of the Apostles chapter 10. Acts of the Apostles chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 3. Acts of the Apostles chapter 10 verse 3. He saw in a vision evidently about the nice hour of the day, an angel of God coming in to him and saying, Cornelius, and when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine arms are come up for a memorial before God. Now send men to Joppa. And call for one Simon, whose name is Peter. He lodges with one Simon Etana, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. And when the angel will speak unto Cornelius, was departed, he called two of his household servants. I was going to inculcate it into them, instill it into them drive each into them. It was going to make them part of the vision to be fulfilled. And a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. And when he had declared all these things unto them, what did he do? Tell me out aloud, what did he do? He sent them to Joppa. Get other people involved with the vision. Inculcate the vision. And look at verse 24. In verse 24, it says, And on the morrow, after they entered into Caesarea, and Cornelius waited for them, and had called together his king's men and near friends. Inculcate in your neighbors. Inculcate in your friends, inculcate in members of the church, drill it into them. Let them understand about this vision of fruitfulness. When Cornelius saw the vision, he didn't just say, Praise the Lord, my prayers are answered. Praise the Lord, my arms given, recognized by God, recognized in heaven. He made other people to get involved. Look at verse 33. In verse 33, immediately therefore I say to thee, and thou hast well done that thou art come. Now therefore are we all here. Now therefore my neighbors are here, my friends are here, my family members are here, and the soldiers I have control over, they are all here now. Are we all here present before God to hear all things that I commanded thee of God. Look at verse 44. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. That's what to do with the vision. The vision of thirty fold uh, fruitfulness. Internalize the vision. Investigate the vision. Interpret the vision. Inform others about the vision. Intercede concerning the vision. Initiate action to fulfill that vision. Inculcate the vision 
in the hearts, the minds, the lives of others. Point number two, after God has given us the result, that's the initial result, that is the thirtyfold fruitfulness, you are going to be fruitful. I said you will be fruitful. Now, the next thing is that we're not stopping there at the thirtyfold level. We're not stopping there at the thirtyfold uh, fruitfulness. We now want to invest the valuables in the process of sixtyfold fruitfulness. It's going to take time. It's going to take time planting and reaping, sowing and reaping, laboring and harvesting. It's going to take time and it is a process. And as we talk about fruitfulness in the church and fruitfulness in the local church, fruitfulness in the district church, there is a process that it takes and we need to invest our lives we need to invest our time. We need to invest our treasure. We need to invest our skill. We need to invest everything we've got. And we need to invest everything in the process of having more fruit. We're coming to Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. I'm reading from verses 8 and 9. Matthew chapter 13, verses 8 and 9. But other fell on good ground. Your word will fall on good ground. Your ministry will penetrate good ground. It says, but other fell on good ground and brought forth fruit. Some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. We're reading from verse 9 in verse 9. Who has ears to hear, let him hear. I have ears to hear. I hear. I receive. And it's going to work in my life. It's going to work in my ministry. That 60-fold fruit. Look at the vision here. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 18. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 18. Reading from verse 9. Then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision. New Testament, New Testament. God revealing himself to the laborers, to the servants, to the apostles, to the preachers. Because their minds were on the work of God. Their minds were on the, evangel on the evangelization of their whole world. And because their minds were there, and because they centered their affection on the age, and because they were willing to sacrifice everything, the Lord revealed himself unto them in a vision, the vision of fruitfulness. It says, be not afraid, but speak. Hold not thy peace, for I am with thee. And no man shall set on thee to hurt thee. For I have, tell me, for I have, say it aloud, for I have, I want to hear you here, I have much people in this city. We're going from 30-fold fruitfulness and we're going to 60-fold fruitfulness. I have much people in this city. As a result of that, verse 11, he continued there a year and six months teaching the word of God among them. Teaching the word of God among them. Remember once again, let's look at that again. Proverbs chapter 29. Proverbs chapter 29, reading from verse 18. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there is no vision, the people perish. If you look at the ministry of Paul the Apostle, he had challenges in most of the places he went. And if there were no vision, he would have quit. He would have said, there's no point. The trouble is too much. There's no point. The trials are too many. There's no point. The oppression is too great. There's no point. The opposition is so terrible. And because of that, I'm leaving. After all, I have other things I could do with my time. 
but a man of vision will never quit and that's why you'll never quit i said that's why you'll never quit the church is um, kind of low and cold today i said that is why you will never quit because you see he was a man of vision and because he was a man of vision he saw the vision he accepted the vision he internalized the vision he investigated the vision he interpreted the vision he influenced other people concerning the vision he interceded because of the vision he initiated action because of the vision and he inculcated it instilled it in the lives of many other people concerning the vision because of that he kept going and kept going and it was fruitful he bought fruit where there is no vision the people perish if there is vision our people will not perish our communities will not perish our local governments will not perish and the places where we came from and were ministering they will not perish in Jesus name now fruitfulness is a practical issue in all areas of life each one must do something to bear fruit to bear more fruit, to bear fruit, that's the first level, 30 fold. To bear more fruit, that's the second level, 60 fold. And to bear much fruit, that's the third level, 100 fold. And what are we going to do in the process? Number one, travel with fervency. Travel with fervency uh, you want to see the fulfillment of the vision travail with fervency we're looking at isaiah chapter 53 isaiah chapter 53 and i'm reading from verse 11 isaiah chapter 53 verse 11 he shall see the travail of his soul he shall see the travail of his soul and then it says i shall be satisfied by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. Many will come to salvation. Many will come to justification. For he shall bear their iniquities. Travail, travail, travail. And pray with real passion. And pray with real fervency. Because you are praying, you are traveling for those souls that need to come into the kingdom of God. Isaiah chapter 66, I'm reading from verse 7. Isaiah chapter 66, we're looking at verse 7. Before she traveled, she brought forth traveling. Before, she, before her pain came, she was delivered of a man child. Who has heard such a thing? Who has seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall the nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Many preachers don't have any converts because they don't travail. They are not fervent and they're not seeking the face of the Lord. They just go from day to day, the rounds, the regular things, the usual things, and there is no prayer, and there is no travail. But it says, because Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Number two, team up. Team up with focus. You're focusing on one thing. You're focusing on fruitfulness. And because of that, you team up with others of like precious faith, others of the same mind. Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Ecclesiastes chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 9. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. You have this vision. You want to carry out this vision. You see the vision of fruitfulness and you want to bear fruit, much fruit. Then you team up with others of like precious faith, others of the same mind with focus. You focus on the reason why you're teaming up. Um, 
Luke chapter 10. In Luke chapter 10, reading from verses 1 and 2. Luke chapter 10, verses 1 and 2. After this six, the Lord appointed all the 70 also and sent them two and two before his face. He sent them two and two. He peered them up. And then it goes on to say, to the place whither he himself would come. Therefore said he unto them, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. You team up with others. Number three, treat the fruitless. Treat the fruitless. Find out why are members of your local church not bearing fruit? What are the hindrances on the members, brothers, sisters, and young people? Why are they not evangelizing? Why is the word not bearing fruit in their lives? Treat the fruitless. Come to chapter 13. Chapter 13, you're going to find out why is there no fruit? Why are there no converts? Why is there no increase? Why is there no vision? Why is there no going out and bringing sinners into repentance and into the salvation of the Lord? Matthew chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 19. Look at this. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not. Stop there for a moment. That's one of the reasons why there's no fruit. Understandeth it not. So you will go over what they have learned and make them understand. You will open their understanding. You will open their eyes. You will open their mind to the truth they are hearing so that there will be understanding. So that's number one treatment. Give them understanding. Keep on reading verse 19. Then comes the wicked one and catches away that which was sown in his heart. Why is there no fruit? Why is there no convert? Because even though the people are hearing, Satan comes, since they don't understand, and he catches away what they have learned. You will protect them from the wicked one. You will alert them about the wicked one. You will show them the activities and the works and the messengers and the, uh, and the servants of the wicked one that can take the word away from them. Go, let's go on now. Then it goes on to say, This is he that received seed by the wayside. Verse 20. But he that received the seed in stony places, the same is he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it, yet he has no root in himself. That's another reason why the word is not bearing the fruit. There's no root in them. So what are you going to do in the treatment? Get them rooted in the truth, grounded in the truth. Make sure that you're not just talking you know? Get the response from them. Get the answers from them. Let them show that they are grounded and they are rooted. They cannot be shaken away from the truth. Go on in that verse 21. It says, but dure it for a while. Remains for a while. But for when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. That's why some people do not bear fruit because of persecution. Therefore, strengthen them against persecution. Let them know that greater is he that is in them than he that is in the world. And when you hear the word yourself, 
clear your heart and clear your mind from all these disturbances that will not allow the world to grow in your life. And let's look at uh, verse uh, 20, verse uh, 22. And he that received the seed among sons, that's another reason, clear the sons of the cares of this life. The, the tongues that will choke the word from their heart, clear it away. Then he goes on to say, and he that heareth the word, he heareth the word, and the cares of this world, the cares of this world, won them against the cares of life, the anxieties of life, the worries of life, the things that will occupy their mind and push out the word and push out the vision from their heart. And then he goes on to say in verse 22, uh, that it uh, choke the word, the deceitfulness of riches. Warn them about the deceitfulness of riches. You know, how running after this, after this, the love of money is the root of all evil. Warn them against that, that patch then, that's the treatment for the fruitless. When we do that, number one, you give them understanding. Number two, you protect them from the wicked one. Number three, you deepen their understanding so they are rooted and grounded in the truth. Number four, you strengthen them against persecution. Number five, you clear the sons that choke the word. Number six, you warn them against the cares of life. Number seven, you watch over them so they'll be aware and they will be aware of the deceitfulness of riches. Number one, travail. Number two, team up. Number three, treat. Treat the fruitless. Number four, trim the fruitful. Trim the fruitful. We're looking at John. John chapter 15. In John chapter 15, I'm reading here from verse 2. John chapter 15, we're reading from verse 2. It tells us here in John chapter 15, verse 2, Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it. He trims it. He takes, uh, you know, some non-essentials away from their lives. He takes some things that occupy the ground without uh, serving any purpose. He takes that away from their lives that it will bring forth more fruit. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth what kind of fruit? I say, what kind of fruit? Much fruit, but without me, ye can do nothing. Number five, transform the fable. Transform the fable. You see, there are many believers, there are many members in the church, in your local church, that might be feeble. And you say, there's nothing I can do with this. There's nothing I can do with that. You condemn this. You criticize this. You throw away this one. You stamp on that one. You brush this other one aside. Who is led? You will transform the feeble. Let me show you an illustration here. We're looking at 1 Samuel chapter 23. 1 Samuel chapter 23. Uh, let, me, let me jump back to uh, chapter 22. For Samuel chapter 22, I'm reading from verse 1. For Samuel chapter 22, reading from verse 1. David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave Adullam. And when his brethren and all his father's house had it, they went down see that to him. Verse 2 is very important. Are you there? I said verse 2 is very important. Are you there? Are you in verse 2? And everyone that was in distress, and everyone that was in debt, and everyone that was discontented gathered themselves unto him, and he became a captain over them. 
And there were, were seen about 400 men. Think about that. Everyone owing debts. Everyone discontented. Everyone in distress. Everyone having problem. What a bunch. What a group. What a congregation. That's how some leaders throw up their hands and they say, there's nothing I can do. Look at all the people. They are problematic people. So many problems upon their lives. You know what David did? He transformed them. You will do that. Look at 2 Samuel. Now 2 Samuel chapter 23. 2 Samuel chapter 23. I'm reading from verse 8. That bunch immediately later became 600. But when they joined him, when they came to him, the first time they appeared, it was like they couldn't do anything. Distressed, discontented, and in debt. Look at 2 Samuel chapter 23, verse 8. These are the names of the mighty men whom David had. And then he gives the name there. And the latter part of that, he said, he lift up his spear against 800 whom he slew at one time. Look at verse 9. After him was Eliezer, the son of Dodo, and Ahohite, one of the three mighty men with David. When they defied the Philistines that were there gathered to battle, and the men of Israel were gone away, he arose and he smote the Philistines until his hand was weary and his hand claved to the sword. And the Lord wrought a great victory that day, and the people returned after only to spoil. That is the men that were feeble originally. The people that could do nothing originally. The power of God so came, they were so trained, they were so transformed that now they became invincible, unconquerable. Look at uh, verse 12. He stood in the midst of the ground and he defended it and he slew the Philistines. And the Lord wrought a great victory. All the members of our churches will be transformed. The Lord will use us to transform them. Number one, travail with fervency. Number two, team up with focus. Number three, treat the fruitless. Number four, dream the fruitful. Number five, transform the feeble. Number six, train the faithful. Train the faithful. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, 2 Timothy chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, reading from verse 2. And the things which thou hast heard of me, among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. The same commit to faithful men, who shall be able to, able to teach others also we're coming to genesis chapter 14 genesis chapter 14 i'm reading from verse 11 genesis 14 verse 11 and he took all the goods of sodom and gomorrah and all their victuals and went their way and he took lot abraham's brother brother's son who dwelt in sodom and his goods and departed look at verse 13 and there came one that escaped and told abraham the hebrew for he dwelt in the plain of mamre the amorites the brother of eshcol and brother of anna and these were confederate with abraham look at verse 14 and when Abram heard that, that his brother, Lord, was taken captive, 
he armed. Who did he arm? I said, who did he arm? He armed the strange servants born in his own house. He didn't have children at the beginning. Even at this time, he did not have children of his own, but he had servants. And he wasn't folding his hands and crying and mourning. What can I do? Look at me. Now they're taking lot. If I say I'm going out to do something, no. He looked at the servants born in his house. 318. He trained them. He armed them. And then we're told, 318, and he pursued them unto them. And he divided himself against them, he and his servants, by night. And he smote them, and he pursued them unto Hobah, which is on the left hand of Damascus. And he brought back all the goods. He brought back all the goods. Recovery. Somebody shout, Recovery. And he says, and also brought again his brother Lord and his goods and the women also and the people. Train the faithful. They're there. Train them. The youths, they're there. Train them. The children, they're there. Train them. The brothers, the sisters, the men, the women, they're there. Train them. Number seven, treasure and thirst for personal fruitfulness. Treasure. Don't just say, praise the Lord, our church is growing. Praise the Lord, our group is growing. Praise the Lord, those young people are growing. Your, yourself personally, where is your fruit? Where is your fruit? Look at Genesis chapter 30. Genesis chapter 30. I'm reading from verses 1 and 2. Genesis chapter 30. And I'm reading here from verses 1 and 2. Here he tells us in verse 1, Genesis chapter 30, verse 1, thirst for personal fruitfulness and treasure, personal fruitfulness. And when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said unto Jacob, give me children or else I die. Give me children or else I die. Oh, somebody says, Rachel, what's the matter with you? There are children in the family. Your sister has, you know, a lot of children. How many children do you want in the family? Take care of those other children. Don't think about your personal self. But the woman said, give me children or else I die. She wanted children. You want children. Look at verse 22. And God remembered Rachel. God will remember you. If you are thirsty, he will remember you. If you are passionate about it, he will remember you. God remembered Rachel. And God hearkened to her and opened her womb. Verse 24. And she called his name. Tell me the name. Tell me the name. Shout out the name. She called his name Joseph and said, The Lord shall add to me another son. Hold on now. All the other children in the family before Joseph came, what did they become? As you think about that family, and you think about the family that came, and you think about the salvation and the protection and the provision for the whole of the land of Egypt. None of the other children but Joseph was used of God. That's why you cannot say all those other children are there. Why am I going to personally be asking for my own convert? Why am I asking for my own fruit? Look at chapter 50. Chapter 50. And I'm reading from verse 19 chapter 50 verse 19 God used that Joseph in chapter 50 verse 19 and Joseph said unto them fear not for am I in the place of God but as for you ye thought evil against me but God may teach unto good to bring to pass as it is this day look at this to save much people alive that single child joseph 
as a result of the passion, as a result of the thirst, as a result of the treasure that Rachel had, I must have my own fruit. You will have your own fruit. And so you invest valuables in the process of 60-fold fruitfulness. Point number three now, implementing with virtue and perseverance the hundredfold fruitfulness. Implementing with virtue and perseverance the hundredfold fruitfulness. We're coming to Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. I'm reading from verses 14 and 20. Mark chapter 4, verse 14. The sower went forth, the sower sows the word. The preacher preaches the word. The teacher teaches the word. The evangelist preaches the word. And now in verse 20, and these are they which are sown on good ground. Such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit. Some 30 fold, first level. Some 60, second level, and some and hundredfold. Is that possible? I said in your life, is that possible? Your ministry, is that possible? Genesis chapter 26. Genesis chapter 26, verse 12. Genesis 26, verse 12. Then I seek sword in that land. And received in the same year, tell me, an hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. You are going to become another Isaac. A hundredfold in Jesus' name. Psalm 126. Psalm 126. Psalm 126, verse 5. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. There may be challenges where you're sowing, keep on sowing. There may be difficulties where you're sowing, keep on sowing. There may be heat while you're sowing, keep on sowing. There may be tears while you're sowing, keep on sowing. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bringing, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. You'll bear fruit. Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 11. We're looking at verse 4. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, reading from verse 4. He that observes the wind shall not sow. You see that? Difficulty, challenge, problem. I hear this over the radio. I read this in newspapers. They are rumoring that this will happen, that will happen. He that observeth the wind shall not sow. And he that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. Then he goes on to say in verse 6, In the morning sow thy seed, and in the evening withhold not thine hand, for thou knowest not whither shall prosper either this or that or whether both shall be alike good i pray the lord will bless the work of your hands john chapter 4 john chapter 4 reading from verse 34 john chapter 4 reading from verse 34 it tells us in john chapter 4 verse 34 it says in verse 34 jesus says unto them my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. You'll do the work of God. And this work will prosper in our hands together in Jesus' name. Say not ye that yet for months and then cometh the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. He that reapeth receiveth wages and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. We shall rejoice together in Jesus' name. 
Now, as uh, the uh, disciples uh, were before the Lord Jesus Christ, he told them, when he gave them the mission, and he told them what was going to be the result of their ministry for him in the power of the Spirit. In John chapter 15, verse 8, John chapter 15, verse 8, Herein is my Father glorified, that she bear much fruit. You'll bear fruit. You'll bear more fruit. You'll bear much fruit. And so shall ye be my disciples. Verse 16, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Has he chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, and that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Those disciples, the question now before we close, did they bring forth 30 fold fruit, 60 fold fruit, 100 fold fruit? Let's look at them. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. You'll see 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold. Acts chapter 2, verse 41. Then they that gladly received the soul were baptized. And the same day, there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. There were 120 in the upper room. But you multiply that by 30, you have 3,600. They're almost getting there now, but look at chapter 4. Look at chapter 4, verse 4. How be each many of them which had the word believed, and the number of the men was about 5,000. That's more than 30 fold now. They're going near 60 fold. Look at chapter 6. Look at chapter 5. I'm reading here from verse 14. Chapter 5, verse 14. Fruitfulness. And believers want the more added to the Lord. Multitudes, both of men and women. 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold. Look at verse 28. Same. Verse 28. Did not we strictly command you that you should not teach in this name, behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine. You have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine. They had it 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold. Look at chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 7. Chapter 6, verse 7. And the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold, and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. That time has started again. Look at chapter 9, chapter 9, verse 31. Chapter 9, verse 31, 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold. In verse 31, it says, Then at the churches rest throughout all Judah and Galilee and Samaria, and they were edified, walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost, they were multiplied. That same chapter 9, look at verse 34. In verse 34 it says, And Peter said unto him, Ernest, Jesus Christ maketh thee whole. Arise and make up thy bed. And he arose immediately. Look at verse 35. And all, and all, and all that dwelt at Leda and Sharon saw him and turned to the Lord. It happened to them. It will happen to us. It will happen to you. You will be a fruit. I said you will be a fruit. See the vision. And as you see the vision, accept it. Because you have to accept it before you can achieve it. See the vision and envision it yourself. Personalize it. You have to envision it before you can experience it. See the vision afresh. Conceive it. You have to conceive it before you can carry it. Pay the price. Pay the price before you can possess it. You'll persevere as the vision comes to us and it says go and eat all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Persevere before you can produce it. You'll sweat on the harvest field before you will see the hundredfold. Bury the idleness of the past. Let us begin now to bring forth fruitfulness. You will be fruitful. 
I said you will be fruitful. Look up here, don't look down. I said you will be fruitful. That time has come. Let's rise up and commit ourselves to the Lord. See the vision afresh today. See the vision afresh today. And say, Lord, here am I. Here am I. I am going to be a fruit. I am going to be a fruit. I'm going to be a fruit. With all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, you give yourself to the Lord and you say, Lord, fruitfulness, fruitfulness, fruitfulness. I am going to be a fruit. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. Have you seen any vision at all? Have you seen any vision at all? Internalize it. Have you seen the vision at all? Investigate it. Have you seen the vision at all? Interpret it. Have you seen the vision at all? Inform others, instruct others, influence others, inspire others. Have you seen the vision at all? Intercede. Have you seen the vision at all? Initiate action. Have you seen the vision at all? Inculcate it in other people and say, Lord, here am I today. I'm going to be a fruit a fruit bearing branch of the tree of the vine of the Lord Jesus Christ and the Lord will use you and the Lord will use you and will bear fruit 30 fold 60 fold 100 fold